Don't you just really like it when you go into a book fully expecting to love it, and then, like, you do. Although, in this case, I didn't love it for the reasons I expect to love it. Well, the reasons I expected to love it were very good, but that wasn't the main reason. So, if you guys want some, some real extremely well executed standalone relatively short fantasy novels with a lot of substance and are really strong across the board check this out Okay, so the goal for this is to figure out whether I can review books in less than 30 minutes. I used to be able to do some in like 10 minutes, and now they're all 30 minutes long, which I think, I, I, I maintain that I think um, there is a point of like the 30, I get 30, I have lots of stuff to say when I'm reviewing like, you know, long series, but this is a short standalone book, so should not take 30 minutes to review. Um, so as usual, I'm going to start to give a synopsis and then realize that if you really wanted to know the synopsis, you would just read the back of the book and then give up halfway through. So there's a dude named Kazarill, who's the protagonist, who's walking home, who was a soldier, and uh, presumably bad things happened while he was a soldier, and he's walking, try to get somewhere, and you don't know why. And, and then, get this, he's going to interact with people, and um, there's going to be conflict, maybe personal growth. Um, maybe scheming, maybe violence, whole host of things, really. It's all a good time. Um, okay, so this is by Louis McMaster Bajold, um, who also wrote the Vorkosian saga that I'll now be getting to, uh, probably in 2023, um, and also has, uh, this is, uh, there's some confusion on whether this is a standalone, um, a lot of people say it's a trilogy. There are three books in this universe, um, but I, I happen to know the, the other one, Paladin of Souls, it's following a completely different character from this. Uh, so the other one spoils this one, but is not a continuation of this narrative. It's its own narrative um, that has some connection between them. So it is a standalone book. And I felt that after reading it, like it tells a very complete story. And then the other one, Hallowed Hunt, I think is like a hundred years before this is its own thing. Um, okay. So this one, I feel like uh, I, I don't necessarily have mass appeal where like i think i would i don't know if i would, I would i would not recommend this to someone who's like yeah you know i haven't read a book in like 10 years uh just because it is like a relative slow burn but i can say to people who like actively read fantasy i recommend you read this book which i guess actually is the entire point of the review but I'm now going to try and convince you other than I uh, I recommend why you read this book. So, um, this author is compared to Robin Hobb quite a lot. I actually didn't know how much, like, success she'd had in awards. She's won four Hugos for Best Novel. Anyway, uh, compared to Hobb a lot, um, and that is largely for a few reasons. One, uh, her, this novel is very character-driven. Um, and I would like to, again, clarify, uh, character-driven um, just means that the conflict and the story is driven by who the characters are. It does not like you can have a character-driven story with bland, uninteresting, boring characters. You can also have a plot-driven story with like human, interesting, complex, dynamic, amazingly done characters. Anyways, this happens to be character-driven and have really good characters. So yay! Um, I would say to start off, probably the first third of the novel, I was I thought Casarol was like a really good protagonist, but I thought like um, the side cast wasn't quite like at that level. Uh, and then by the end of the novel, I thought the side cast was also fantastic. So I would say, um, well, actually, the novel is really clever because when you're reading the first third of this novel, you think what's really being done is establishing the protagonist and then the setting. And then all these details that you thought were just character and world building, like they're all plot relevant, um, which is, I, I actually don't think I'm exaggerating. Now, I would want to read, uh, I'm not 100% sure about this because I, I only read it once. But uh, I actually don't think you can cut a scene from this novel. And it's it's almost reached, I don't know if, like, you almost can't cut a detail from this novel. Like, the amount of, um, the amount of stuff that multitasks in this novel, like, it establishes character, setting, and is important for the plot, is pretty extraordinary. Um, I usually, uh, like, character-driven stories, like this is, like, the conflict is very much driven by... Like, it's like the characters make the decisions that feel like fit their character. 
and then we get the plot from there, which, as you could imagine, like, very naturally can lead to, like, some indulgent plots because, you know, people generally don't act in a way that leads to, like, mega-type storytelling. And this manages to do both. And, I mean, I don't do writing, so I don't know how hard that is, but I feel like however hard I think that is, it's probably more difficult than that. Um, and I, I actually, like, don't know how she did that. Like, like I'm actually not sure what the process of that would be. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty extraordinary. And it manages to, to really be a fantastic example of how something can be like a very rather pretty, like pacing wise, slow to medium, um, while still also having like excellent plotting and extremely tight plotting. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Um, and then like Bujolde is very much known for her characters. Uh, they are very much like feel like they have complexity and depth. Uh, it also it's a it's a nice it's a nice book because a lot of the writers who are famous for like their character work not all. Um, I mean, I would argue in some ways not Hob, but sometimes Hob. Um, a lot of their like best characters are characters who are also like they kind of suck, but they're just really interesting. And uh, so if you think of like you know the usually like. The people who uh, people who read Greenbone would agree, like Hilo is the most interesting character. A lot of time, like you know, the most interesting character in a book, if they were a person, you'd be like, "This is a bad person." Um, and this was nice because the the people, like you don't have to feel bad for rooting for them, but also they still manage to maintain complexity and feel like a person, um, which which I was definitely a fan of. Like Casual's a good dude. I I I don't have to be like you know. It, it's a great thing. I've I've I, I've kind of thought for a long time that uh, it's it's often conflated when people say a character is complex between like psychological complexity and moral complexity. Uh, it can be like morally complicated to to be like you know where does this person sit on like are they good or evil or uh, is that even a thing? Um, we're bringing randomly moral realism into this book review um, or questioning moral realism in this review. Anyway, um, and. You know, you can have people who it's like it's really hard to put them on that, but I think like they're kind of one note psychologically and like who they are can be summed up pretty quickly. Um, it's just that person that's able to be summed up pretty quickly, you know, wouldn't isn't it's not clear how moral they are. This is this is the opposite. Like I think the the antagon some of the antagonists there are definitely some people who is like a little harder, but like you know, there's one of the bad guys in here. He's like he sucks. He's, he's awful, um, and a lot of people in here are, like, clearly good people. But they, they maintain, like, depth of character. Like, they're multifaceted. They have a lot going on, and they just feel like people. Um, this was one where, character work-wise, I got more impressed with it as I went. Uh, I think um, there, are, there are some authors who are really good at, like, making you understand a character instantly. And for... I mean, even, maybe not even her casserole, but for the protagonist more, but that wasn't quite Bejold for this. Bejold was more like my, my understanding kept broadening and my appreciation for the characters kept broadening as I read through the novel. Um, and I, I learned more and more and I had more and more interactions. Uh, compare that, like, to contrast, I would say, like, Joe Abercrombie, if you read the first Glockta chapter, it's like, yeah, you know who Glockta is. He's obviously gonna, like, surprise you, but you definitely, like... I don't think she was quite as good at making people, like, ultra iconic instantly. Uh, but over time, they were they, they became really good. And I think one thing that made it kind of similar to Hob, or feel similar, is that I think if most authors wrote this story, like, if they were like, this is the story I want to tell, um, Princess Izelle, Izel, who's one of the supporting cast, would be the protagonist. And Kazaril would be, like, the side character, and then everyone would read it, and, like, Kazaril would be everyone's favorite supporting character. And I really like Kazel as a supporting character, but, you know, Bajold is just kind of like, okay, let's just make... Let's just make Kazaril the main character. And I, that's kind of the same thing for Farseer. And Farseer, like, if that story was told conventionally, Verity would probably be the protagonist, and Fitz would be, like, the supporting character that people would be like, oh, this guy's kind of interesting, you know. Someone would randomly do, like, a video about, like, Fitz has more going on than you expected. But instead, it's just like, let's just make him the protagonist. And this kind of has that similar feel to it. Also, uh, prose-wise, I think the prose, like, it's clearly very good. 
Um, it, it manages to... I'm stealing this from Christopher Rocchio, because he, he's a big fan of Bejold. And he said this, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's absolutely accurate. I was having trouble describing like what made the prose good. And it was, in terms of quantity of words, Bejold is not a particularly descriptive author, but I can picture everything really well. Like, it, I don't know exactly... Again, it's another... This, Bejold is definitely one of those people who I'm like, I'm not sure how you pulled this off like it doesn't make sense that you were able to do this like it seems it seems like there's a lot of stuff that like should be really difficult to manage that are in this book um also setting wise i will say things that are a main focus um well i mean the world is called the world of the five gods so you would expect religion to be a big focus and yes it is and i uh, get this there are five gods i know it's shocking who could have seen this coming and it's, it's another, I thought it was done very well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I, I, I need to add more to this. I think we're happy. This is like probably like a 12 minute review. Um, you know, I probably could come up with a bunch of notes and make a 30 minute, but honestly, it's just not needed. You should, you should read this unless you like primarily read books for action or like it's pretty low magic. Um, or if you just don't like low magic fantasy. Yeah, that's basically like the only two reasons I would so all right we're gonna go we're gonna say the only people who shouldn't read this book um is if you a I mean the prose wasn't super easy like it was at times like it didn't read super fast but I thought it was like you know not super challenging but let's say like okay you just you're someone who hasn't read a book in like 10 years and you just you want something that's like a pretty easy read this isn't like a hard read it's like medium difficulty um two you just don't like low magic fantasy um or Three, it's a priority for your books that things are like really epic, world-ending stakes, giant battles, no giant battles, no fireballs, none of that. Um, or four, I, I don't know actually. That's so I only like the only three reasons I can come up with. Um, yeah, you should you should you should read it because it was a really good novel and it was really impressive. And I'm now gonna be doing a lot of Bajol in 2023. Um, yeah, so I gave this 9.2 out of 10, which, yes, we're doing the ratings. I'm going to do a video in defense of ratings at some point, even though now sometimes I forget to give things ratings and reviews, so I'm kind of defeating my own point. But that's okay, because this was excellent. Four and a half or five star. I mean, 9.2 ounces of four and a half. So if we're doing the star system, it's four and a half stars for me. Um, really, really good novel. It would have easily made my top 10 standalones if I'd, if I'd read it before the top 10 standalones. I didn't know it was a standalone. I'm not going to lie. If I'd known this was a standalone, I probably would have read it in May. Okay? I, I didn't know. Um, so, yeah, tell people it's a standalone because it is. And it's short, too. It's just like 400 pages. Um, yeah. Bejold. Good stuff. Curse of the Chalion. There's this crow. I wonder if he's plot. It's all important. Pay attention because you're going to be reading something and you're going to be like, Oh, this scene, like, all it's doing is, like, establishing world and, like, setting this thing up for a character. This novel's too long. It should be shorter. And then you're going to get, like, 500 pages later, and it's going to be like, Oh, crap, that was set up. My mind is blown. I don't know. Um, it's a really good novel. Um, if you've read it or have it on the TBR, let me know what you think. Um, have I convinced you? Will you read it sooner? Uh, and if, if not what do I have to do? And I mean, if, if the answer is no, because like, you know, you are one of the people who I said shouldn't read it, then okay, fair enough. But if you're not that, then what do I have to do to get you to read it sooner? I'm willing to answer any questions. Have a nice day.